<laughs> There's so many funny things happening today, guys. Yeah, so I dyed my hair blonde. I did it because Boomrazzle dyed his hair and he's my co-caster. Just get used to it, guys. I'm just gonna be blonde for like a couple weeks, maybe like a couple months. It's, I don't know how long hair dye lasts, but I think it looks pretty good. Some people are conflicted, but I think it actually looks pretty, pretty steezy. I think it looks pretty dope. Today, we're gonna be ranking every single legend in terms of how good they are in solo mode. From F all the way to S tier. Let's uh, let's get started. All right, we're gonna go in order from Assault Legends to Controller. I think that's probably the best way to do it, starting with Bangalore. Bangalore obviously is always a really good pick. You can never really go wrong with Bangalore. Bangalore has a really solid passive, a passive that works in solos. And I say that because there are a good amount of passives in this list of legends here that do not even work in solos. The tactical, the, ch the smoke is actually great for rotations. You saw it there, even though I was ratting a little bit, you could use it to safely get away from stuff. Even pop a Heal off, especially with the passive healing that you get not only in the smoke, but generally for solos. I think Bangalore gets a net positive buff overall. The ultimate is probably the weakest part, though, but it still has its utility, especially in the final rings and whatnot. It's not going to get you as much value as it would in regular game modes where you have a whole team you need to cover and a whole team you need to fight. I think Bangalore is really solid. I'd probably put Bangalore safely in A tier. I don't think there's anywhere else that Bangalore belongs. Few moments later. Are you saying that I look like Bangalore here? You were talking about Solar Soldier Bangalore? I'll take it. It looks better on me than Bangalore, let's just be honest. Sorry, Bangalore. But let me know who, who's pulling it off better, me or Thanos Bangalore? I would say it's me. Okay, and up next we got Fuse. Fuse genuinely surprised me. I think Fuse actually might be one of the better legends in solos. Having unlimited access to grenades is really cool. The ultimate is also very useful. The tactical being like essentially a never ending wave of grenades that can cause a lot of chaos and stuff is really cool. His passive to hold extra grenades, not really as important. In this game mode, you don't really need syringes and med kits, so you actually have naturally a lot more extra space. So his passive doesn't really get as much value in my opinion, but his tactical and ultimate are both very, very, very solid. I actually think Fuse is pretty solid and I would put him maybe even above Bangalore in A tier. I think A is fair for Fuse in solo mode. Next up we got Ash. I think Ash is one of the most underwhelming legends, period. Ash is trash. If it rhymes, it has to be true. Ash is tactical. If it even works, is like decent for those 1v1 scenarios, but there are so many better tacticals. Her passive is non-existent. Her ultimate is like fine. It's a little bit more selfish as a get out of jail free card. I wouldn't say she's like anywhere near as bad as she would be in a team based mode. Being a little bit more selfish, her kit does actually work a little bit better. I just think she's outclassed by like the vast majority of the roster. Probably put her in seats here. I think she does get a little bit of an upgrade in solos because of the ultimate being, you know, that one way selfish portal and the tactical can be good in some 1v1 scenarios, but like otherwise, ugh, Ash is, Ash, come on. No more than C minus, let's be real. Mad Maggie impressed the crap out of me. Solos is gonna be a campy mess, just the way it actually is, right? Most of their kit is really solid. Shotguns are so important. I think PK is like a must pick in this game mode. So having the ability to move fast with the PK is huge. The drill came in clutch almost every single time. People trying to heal behind walls, behind corners, thinking they're safe. You saw it, I was using every single ability there and it was actually pretty nuts and pretty fantastic. The ultimate even surprised me as well. You can break through walls, but you can use it as a movement ability to get back in his zone really quick. It's just like another option that you have. Honestly, Mad Maggie, I'd probably still say top of A. I don't think S tier necessarily yet. I just feel like there are legends that belong in S tier that make the most sense, and I'll explain why later, but I think top of A tier is very solid for Mad Maggie, dude. Where will we be putting Ballistic in this tier list? I personally think Ballistic... Ah, uh, like the sling weapon, if you get a good one like the Rampage or an alternator, it has potential, but everything else about his kit is so mid. I think I can't in good conscience put it anywhere higher than D tier. Let's just be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with our with our life. I don't want to hurt the old man, but you know, D tier. The fair and balanced place to put Ballistic. His tactical is really mid and the ultimate is really the only thing you really care about. You're not ever really using the sling weapon. And if you are, it's like, it's not helping you that much. Now we're on Pathfinder though. Pathfinder's grapple is incredible in so Solo mode, it has already been a selfish tactical. So much better in solo mode than it is in trios. And now they even have an upgrade to the passive where if you get a knock, you can tactical again. The ultimate is also very good for getting to high ground. Passive doesn't exist, but it doesn't really even matter, to be honest. And getting the ability to scan care packages and then use your ultimate faster is crazy. I'm not gonna beat around the bush anymore, guys. Pathfinder, in my opinion, for being one of the best movement legends in the game, is easily an S tier solo legend, for sure. The more selfish you already are in trios, you're gonna be great in solos. Let's just be honest. I'm gonna do Wraith next. Let's be honest here, like, I think the sweaty TTV Wraith mains think that Wraith is S tier. Besides her tactical, I don't 
feel like the rest of her kit really does anything. I think her passive is actually not that bad in solo mode. Getting knowledge about what's happening behind you is actually pretty cool. But in general, I don't see why you would use Wraith other than the fact that she has a okay-ish tactical in a 1v1, sort of. Like, you can get chased pretty easily. And I guess having a tiny hitbox is great in 1v1 scenarios. So, I don't know. I think B tier. B tier just for the hitbox alone, straight up. Otherwise, like, you're just playing Wraith because you're sweaty TTV. Like, let's be honest. Like, you just want to get clips. Okay, we're on Octane now. I think it's really sad. Octane's passive is given to basically everybody in solo mode. So, right off the bat, his passive is a little bit worse. However, because of the fact that you have a really fast healing, the stim feels phenomenal in this game. Like, I feel like you can stim left and right and get crazy movement. And the jump pad also feels really good as well. I do think that Octane in general is in a good spot in solos. I do think he's very much outclassed by Pathfinder in solo mode, though. So, I would probably put him... I'd probably put him in, like, high B. Yeah. Revenant Reborn! Revenant Reborn, S tier. I already talked about in his video how I felt that Revenant Reborn's entire kit is extremely selfish. And like, I told you that being selfish in solo mode is a huge deal. I genuinely think that his tactical, very good by himself. The ultimate, insanely good. Passive is even good as well. All of these things combined make Revenant a killing machine and is nuts in solo mode. So that's why I think Revenant is an S tier just a little bit below Pathfinder. I do think Pathfinder is the more selfish, better movement legend. Horizon's kind of OP, let's be honest. Let's discuss Horizon now. Horizon Horizon, kind of nuts. In solo mode, we all can agree that Horizon's tactical is phenomenal for uh, not only being aggressive and getting to the high ground, but also being a little bit more defensive, to escaping. And like I said, in solo mode, there's going to be a lot of campers, a lot of people just happy camping. Horizon's ultimate says a no to campers. You're hiding behind a door, you're hiding in a building, that building is my building now. So I genuinely can't live in a world where Horizon is any less than S tier. Like, let's just be honest here, guys. Like, Horizon is built for solo mode. Horizon is just built different. Horizon is so good in every Every single thing it doesn't even matter it's actually crazy now it's valk time guys i'm gonna be honest with you valkyrie has been nerfed to the ground her tactical is not terrible at all like you can do some pretty cool shenanigans in the 1v1 scenario but otherwise her ultimate is just a worse air balloon i think in the end of the day like valkyrie's issues that she has in trios they do bleed into solo mode as well i think the safest place i could put valk is probably like i think top of c tier is where valk's gonna go oh hell yeah altar time let's go altar the newest legend is not bad at all in solo mode. I do think that their kit gets more value, especially the ultimate, gets way more value with other teammates. But the tactical was really fun for breaching into areas because it's a very campy game mode. I've mentioned that before. Solos is very campy. Being able to breach is a huge deal. The looting is pretty useful as well, but not as important in solos. I think Alter is a solid B tier legend. I'd say like mid B tier. I think it's a fair spot for Alter. Bloodhound is pretty okay in solos, honestly. The scan is useful for knowledge, but you have the ability to know when enemies are around you within a 50 meter radius. So it's not as necessary and it's definitely way worse in solo mode over like trios. While Bloodhound in general is not bad by any means and the ultimate can be very good, I think not having strong vertical mobility is gonna kill you in the long run in solo mode. Like low B tier. I think low B is fine. Yo, Crypto! I don't think Crypto is going to be good at all. Let's be honest, we all knew this was going to happen. Crypto obviously has really solid scanning capabilities, but because you can't really use the drone to its full effect in solo mode, unlike in trios where you can let your team go in, use the EMP, do a big push, you really can't do that. So you're stuck with like what is essentially a bad security camera that can be destroyed very easily. And I don't feel like that is useful whatsoever. You know, I have an F tier for a reason, guys. And, uh, sorry, he's such a team player. He's just not built for solo mode at all. Anyway, Seer time. Seer's F tier. Seer's just slightly better than Crypto, though. I don't even want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. I don't want to see it. Seer, you're dead to me. Go away. No one likes you. Vantage time. Vantage surprised me. Honestly, Vantage has the one things that we like about solo legends. We like movement. We like having cool ultimates that actually help you out. The sniper is actually really strong. Passive, not really the most useful, but it does give you an idea roughly of like, where where the enemy can be because you have that, like kind of a scan when you have long range weapons like your sniper honestly think that vantage would probably fit solidly in a tier like like right below mad maggie i think mad maggie had a little bit more pushing material gibby time gibraltar the gibby man the thick boy not even on this tier list what you look they forgot gibby they forgot gibraltar what the heck kind of tier list shenanigans is going on here anyway the bubble is decent that's about it the ultimate comes in sometimes arm shield is also okay, but having such a ginormous hitbox and not really getting the main value out of Gibraltar's kit, which is the fact that you can revive, I would put Gibby probably low C. 
We're on Lifeline. Let's talk about Lifeline. Lifeline, unfortunately, is one of the biggest victims of the solo mode having a couple things that kind of nullify everything that makes her good. Her tactical, pretty much useless because you have passive healing. Her passive, completely useless because you have no teammates. So now what you're left with is an ultimate and sometimes the ability to self-revive. Not really that useful. The ultimate though can get you a big upgrade if you get the special ultimate. So yeah, in general, you can just be honest with ourselves here. Lifeline is completely outclassed by like everybody and she just got shafted the hardest by solo mode in general. And I can't in good conscience, it has to be F tier. F tier for Lifeline. Loba. Loba's ultimate is decent. Solo mode, the loot pool is a little bit better, generally speaking. So the ultimate doesn't feel as powerful. However, her tactical seems to be really fun. Like her tactical is very, very good. In trios, like her tactical, in my opinion, pretty mid. But in solos, like be as selfish as you need to be. Yeah, so her tactical is, is solid and her ultimate is pretty good. Uh, in general, I think that Loba is safely like a top of C tier legend. I don't feel like you would want to use Loba. There are better movement legends in B, A, and S tier, but she's not bad. She's definitely very middle of the pack. So like top of C, like C plus. It's time to go Mirage. We got to talk about Mirage. Mirage low key cooks. In a 1v1 scenario, the ultimate is way too much. I was genuinely blown away by how strong Mirage felt in solo mode right now. And I think I would be stupid not to put Mirage for the first time ever in any tier list that included him. I can't believe this is happening. Mirage's first ever S plus. He just gets away with so much. Like the clones are actually a threat, especially if you have the ability where if you bamboozle somebody, you can use your tactical again. Like that stuff is annoying. Way, way too strong for them to deal with. Like this might be a little bit of a over exaggeration. If anything, Pathfinder should probably be S plus, but come on, let's just keep Mirage here, okay? Newcastle, honestly, the shield is pretty solid. The ultimate can come up in some scenarios, but like generally speaking, not having your main utility being that you're really good at like protecting teammates with your ultimate and your passive that you can't use, you can't put Newcastle any higher than like C tier. And I do think that shield is a little bit better than Gibby's at times. So I'd probably put it like above Gibby. But in general, I still feel like Newcastle's too big of a hitbox. Not really worth running. Conduit time. I wanted to talk about Conduit for a while. I think in a meta where your health generates naturally, having the ability to use a tactical and get your shields back is extremely overpowered in solos. Conduit might actually be one of the most overpowered legends in the solo most specifically because of the siphon, because of all these things, because you can essentially like run away like I did, still get your health up and then push. It's really nuts. I think Conduit actually might end up being one of the better legends. I don't want to put her too, too, too high up. She doesn't have a passive without a teammate, obviously, so that does knock her down a little a peg. I want to put her like right below Vantage and A tier. I think that's a fair spot for Conduits. Honestly, an insane tactical. So good. Caustic. Come on, let's be honest. Caustic owns the indoors and the indoors is all about solos. If you want to play aggressive, play Pathfinder, play Revenant, play Horizon. But if you want to play more defensive, if your goal is just to win, to get to the final ring, to get to that solos bolos, you feel me, dude? Then yeah, like go Caustic. Caustic is nuts. Every single one of his abilities are very solid. And if other people are going to be running Caustic, you're actually going to be at an advantage. Easy S tier. I think that's like the good spot for Caustic. Watson in solo mode has potential. I do think holding indoors is very important. Watson is just a little bit worse than Caustic at holding the indoors because he can't really hold down doors. However, having the ability to passively regenerate shields on top of having already free health heals is kind of nuts. So I think there is a combination there that can be exploited eventually. So we'll have to see. Time will tell. But I think Watson is solidly a B tier legend, probably like a little bit above Bloodhound. Rampart. Now Rampart, I think Rampart's walls can be really annoying to deal with. You can use them to punker down indoors, but if the ring ends up pulling a little bit more outdoors, you can also use it that way as well. So I think Rampart's ultimate as well is really cool and having the ability to fast reload behind your walls while also being good with LMGs is also a very useful thing to have in a character. Mid BT right there as well. Last but certainly not least, we got Catalyst. Catalyst's tactical got nerfed, so it's not as good to hold doors down because you can't get spiked as you're on the other side. However, being able to lock people indoors is kind of funny. Being able to hold down the indoors with that is also good, but it's not really as defensive because the moment that they break that door, you're getting breached. You're not as good as Caustic for holding the indoors like that. Her ultimate can be good to rotate, but like I said, it's not really as good in solos. It makes it kind of clear there's a Catalyst over here versus when you do that with the full team, it gives it obscures the entire team composition. It obscures 
here's your whole plan. And I do think that catalyst for that reason doesn't really deserve to be anywhere higher than like C tier, maybe like, like a little bit worse than Newcastle, honestly. So that is my solo tier list. Mirage is more of a meme. If you really want to know my actual thoughts, I think the only really S plus one is Pathfinder and Mirage would be just solid S. But come on, guys, all the Mirage mains, they need to hear the angels for them one time in their life. They never get to hear the angels. Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree with my list? Let me know in the comments down below. And who is your personal favorite legend to play in solo mode? I would like to know. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for vibing. If this becomes a video, play the outro now.